today is all about this guy. I'd like to introduce you to Gizmo, our traveling fur baby, as the kids call him. Um, Gizmo is 11 years old. He is a Shih Tzu American Eskimo mix. He's the smaller variety of the Eskimo. And he just had a haircut, so this is why he's looking a little thin. <laughs> Gizmo doesn't like to be held for very long, no, so he he's no longer going to be on the shot. But we do want to talk about pets on the road. Right. So there are a lot of things that you need to consider if you're bringing any of your fur babies with you. Of course, some of this will cross over to other pets, but we are specifically talking about dogs because that's what we have and that's what, um, that's what we know. So if you have a parrot, I might not have all the info you need to know for that. Or a rabbit. Before you hit the road, there are some things that you need to prepare or gather before hitting the road. First, of course, is make sure your animal, dog, is up to date on all their vaccines. Absolutely. You want to make sure your dog is protected um, before you hit the road. Mm -hmm. You also may want to carry a copy of all those vaccines on board with you because if something happens and you need to go to an emergency room, you're going to want to have those records with you. If your pet's on medications, just like you want a 90-day supply of medications for yourself, you're also going to want that for your pet. So make sure you're adequately stocked on their meds. Good call. Don't want to be on the road and run out. No, that would suck. Yeah. And then also make sure you switch over their collar. So like us, we were living in a traditional sticks and bricks. It had the address and phone number of our house. Well, now that our house is mobile, that wouldn't do us any good. Well, not the entire collar, just the tag. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, what I meant, the, the tag. tag. We changed Gizmo to just our phone numbers, so if he were out running loose in a park and we didn't know, somebody could call us. Um, next, of course, you're going to make sure that you have everything you need for your dogs. Mm -hmm. So leash, the, your food and water dishes, your... Yeah, very important. So we did forget those one time. Yeah, we did. <laughs> when we were doing our, uh, what's it called? When our our shakedown. Our shakedown. Yeah, we, we forgot those. Oops. You're also going to want to make sure you have your crate, your pet's blanket, toys, anything else that they love and they're used to, you're going to want to bring that with you. Yeah, absolutely. Don't leave home without them because um, it's going to be a, a change in environment for them and you want them to feel as comfortable as they were in your sticks and bricks here in the RV. All right, let's talk about some considerations when with your RV. When you're choosing your RV and you're bringing pets, you might want to keep them in mind. You're going to want to make sure your pet can access the RV. Can yeah. they actually make it up the stairs? Yeah, if they have little bitty four-inch <laughs> legs like a basset hound would. Like our not, old dog. Yeah, like our old dog probably wouldn't make it up the steps too well. He would not have made it up. He was an old guy in the yeah. end anyway, so yeah. he wouldn't have made it up. Also, think about how much carpet the RV is going to have that you're considering. Because, of course, we all know the more carpet you have, the more fur, sand, dirt, dirt and just yep. grime they're going to bring in. So, kind of be aware of that and try and, and find an RV with the least amount as possible. Yep, that's a good call. Um, <clears throat> of course, make sure you have room for your dog's belongings with the slides closed. If you have a big dog that sleeps in a crate, when those slides are closed in, are you going to have room for that crate? Yeah. And where is the dog going to be while you're traveling? Mm -hmm. So is there room? It's really important. That's a, that's a, I think that's huge. That's more important than can they get in. I mean, once they're in, they got to be able to, to sit and sleep somewhere. Right. Especially right. if you're overnighting. Also, if you have a cat, um, make sure you think about the litter box. What's going to be the best placement for a litter box? Is there somewhere ideal? Um, so you want to make sure there's room for that as well. Yep, absolutely. All right, now there is a big thing to consider when RVing, and that is temperature. Yep, leaving your pet by themselves in this big old hot box during the summer. Yeah, it. Th I mean, it's an RV, so it's like a car. So it can and will heat up just like a car. And sometimes really fast. Yeah. Yeah. So we decided to go with a Wi-Fi monitored uh, temperature and humidity indicator here in the RV. Mm -hmm. And it's a GoV Wi-Fi temperature control. And I'll put the link below. We got it off Amazon. And what it does for us is it tells us the inside temperature of the rig and the relative humidity. And we set the parameters to what we thought would be comfortable for Giz while we were out. Mm -hmm. And I get notifications on my phone when the temperature gets too high or low. Uh, same with the relative humidity so right. that we can keep track. And if we're gone, if something happens and there's a spike in the temperature, the f fallback is our AGS, our automatic generator start, um, that'll kick the ACs on. And if that doesn't control the heat, 
I'll know by the, the notifications that I'm getting and then, then we'll just come back and make sure we figure out why the AGS didn't start or why is it getting hot in here. Right. Um, we would not leave Gizmo by himself without full hookups if we were in extreme temperatures. Say, right. you know, if there's a risk of uh, it getting too hot or too cold, which it doesn't take much. You know, no. it can be 55 outside and the sun shining and it can get hot in your rig. So do consider that with pets. You're not going to want to leave them alone if you're boondocking um, and no way to heat or cool the RV. And there are many other... Um, temperature monitors on the market. Some you pay a monthly fee, just like maybe if you had a security in your home. Um, but this one we went with, we wanted to try one that did not have a monthly fee. And so far it's worked out great yeah, for us. Absolutely, it, it sure has. And, and it, I get the updates and I can go into the app anytime I want and refresh it and it gives me real time temperature and humidity. So once you have your perfect RV for you, <laughs> um, you're gonna wanna introduce your pet to the RV before hitting the road, just like you're getting comfortable Comfortable with your RV your pet needs to get comfortable too absolutely bring them in and, and let them sniff around and hang out just walk yeah. in and out with them gizmo he didn't want to come in at first he wasn't too sure about it he, was he, scared. he sat by the door looking and he had to be coaxed in and then when he did come in he took off running straight <laughs> to the back and he face planted into the, into the mirror, mirror on the closet door so he didn't have a good introduction to <laughs> Ruby here at all no no that wasn't a good first day no but what we recommend is Bring their stuff in, it's bring the bed, bring his toys, let him actually hang out, get comfortable, and get used to your RV. Yep, that's a good point. That's very good tips. Another thing to think about is the engine noise. That might frighten some dogs, so it wouldn't hurt to run your generator or run your engine with them in the RV before you actually hit the road. Yep, that'll, and that'll put them at ease once they get used to it. Right, right. Yep. It does take time. It took time for kids to get used to being in the RV. So, And, of course, every dog will be different, just like people. So how long it takes them to adjust is going to vary. Um, but some signs of anxiety will include whining, heavy drooling, yeah, drooling, and um, even pacing. So all of that could show um, your your pet might be a little anxious. Yep. And if it's been you know quite a while and you feel like they're still not adjusting, you might want to talk to a vet and find out if there's something else you can do. All right, so now you've found that perfect RV and you've got the dog all comfortable and used mm -hmm. to the RV. Now you're going to hit the road. A couple of suggestions before you do that is take them on a long walk. You know, kind of get them tired. Make sure yeah. that they go to the bathroom before you get in. Um, because with that, if they have a little anxiety, um, having to go to the bathroom might be a little more frequently if they're not adjusted or you yeah. haven't walked them before you hit the road. And they may even have accidents while you're riding down the road, too. So that's something else to think about. Yeah, and we kind of time my pit stop so we can take gizmo out as well so after a couple hours uh, i know that he's probably getting antsy so we'll stop at a rest stop and, and we'll walk him for sure um some precautions while you're actually traveling down the road um, you can have your pet in the crate you can um, buy the harness that allows you to seat belt them mm -hmm. into the um, couch while you're moving so that that keeps them from roaming around or jumping up in your lap unexpectedly yeah. while you're driving and the seat belts are recommended um, i know a lot of people don't belt their dogs in, we might be one of them. But I, I would tell you that it is recommended by the vets to belt your dog in in case of an accident. It does uh, ensure your pet safety. So, right, right. But I can tell you Giz does roam. He sleeps in his bed, on his bed, either in between our seats, um, on the couch, or he also has a blanket underneath the table so he can choose where he wants to be. Yeah. All right, so let's talk about being a considerate pet owner. Remember, yeah. you're going to be in all kind of new areas. Your pet's going to be in new areas, and you're going to be, um, you know, you don't have your own backyard anymore. It's, it's not your own kingdom. It's <laughs> everyone's kingdom. This is true, and a lot of people forget that part. Um, so when you're at your park or at your site, wherever you happen to park, um, make sure you're picking up after your dog. That's number yes. one. And there's a lot of reasons for that. One is um, dogs carry a lot of bacteria and they can also carry parasites. So by leaving it on the ground, you put other animals and pets, you know, not just pets, but other animals at risk of all those. And it doesn't just go away. Even after the stool decomposes, the parasites and bacteria remain in the dirt. So you can still infect pets for a couple of years after the stool is gone. So it's so important to pick it up, not just for cleanliness and to prevent me from stepping in it but also to protect other animals so one of the things we do when we're walking gizmo is we make sure that we have our doggy poop bags attached to his um, handle on his leash yeah. we always have bags with us 
some parks will have dog cleaning stations that yeah. have bags there. I'll use them while we're in the park because I'm paying for it, so I'll use them. All right, next is to remember to keep your pet on a leash at all times. Even if you have the sweetest, kindest dog around, remember, personalities change when pets are leashed. So if your dog runs toward another dog, that dog is going to be afraid because they know they can't run away. So they can become aggressive even if they're not normally aggressive. And there have been bites, not only pets, but, but people, people that we know personally because dogs weren't on a leash. So make sure you leash your dog if you're outside your RV. It's really important. Yeah, and a lot of parks will put that in their rules or their guidelines. Even if you're sitting outside at your site enjoying a campfire or eating dinner, leash them. Be mindful of your pet's barking. Even if you're not there, remember a lot of these campgrounds, we can be at really close <laughs> quarters and nobody wants to hear a barking dog all day long. Also, finding a local vet. So you can decide... Um, about how you want to do your veterinary care. Um, we use Banfield, which is a part of PetSmart. That way our record is always um, carried over everywhere we go. Um, but if you don't want to use Banfield, that's fine. You can carry your pet record with you. And just like when you go to a new area and you want to know where the medical services are, looking up a veterinary service so you're aware in case there's an emergency, it's a really good idea to do that. Yeah, well. that's, a, that's a really good idea. And th the other reason we stayed with PetSmart is um, the grooming that we use through them has every guard or blade that they use to, to cut him, it's in the system and they know exactly how he is to be groomed. So we have had very good luck with that since we started. Traveling with a pet, I think, is awesome. We it love is. traveling with a gizmo, but, you know, it's just like having a kid. So you do have to worry about their comfort, about their safety. You you can't leave and go overnight. You can't be gone all day. You have to come home and walk them. So pets are a consideration. If your pet is used to just roaming in the backyard oh, free yeah. without a leash, um, you may want to take them on walks with the leash so that they know that they can go to the bathroom while on the leash. Gizmo... He never pooped on a leash before we started full-timing. No. Not once. It took a couple days. Yeah, until yeah. finally one day he was like, all right, I guess I'm not <laughs> running free in the backyard. We had to train him to do that because yeah. he wasn't accustomed to doing that. So it's something else to think about. So as you prepare for life on the road, remember your pet has to also be prepared. So make sure you get them accustomed and used to it and take your time with them because they also are going to have some adjustments. Yep. And not to mention that, you know, they're just fun to have while you're out on the road. It gets you out and it's kind of a cool icebreaker when you're walking around the park. Gizmo's ears are a magnet. Well, magnet. Oh, so. go ahead. He wants to say a chick magnet, but he opted out. <laughs> But it's just a good icebreaker in a park. It's one way to meet your neighbors. But two, he's also a great guard dog. He hears things yeah, way before we true. do. That's so true. if ever you see us in a park or you see Ruby in the park, you're going to see Gizmo sitting in the driver's seat looking out the window. That's his perch. Yep. And I want to let you know, those of you guys who are waiting anxiously for some footage of us exploring awesome new places, please don't give up on us. We are at our home port. We're getting some medical issues taken care of. So in a couple of weeks, we will be on the road again, bringing you new locations yep. and awesome new experiences. And we cannot wait for that. Yeah, I'm ready to go now, but we got to catch the appointments first. Yeah, Doc said no, not yet. Yeah. Thanks again for watching. If you have any questions or comments about our video, please drop them below. If we don't know the answer, I bet some of our experienced RV subscribers will. So don't be afraid to ask. Nope, absolutely. And make sure you hit that subscribe button. Give us a pause up <laughs> and hit the notification bell, please. And we will see you on, on the, the road. road. Gizmo doesn't like to be held for very long. No. He's got a little independent streak in him, so we had to put him down. But <laughs> No, we had to put him on the floor. We didn't no, put him down. That's not what I, I meant. <laughs> Alright, let's do that again. <laughs> and you can hear Giz playing now. Oh, oh now he's all Giz. spun up. Giz. <laughs> I, how do I start it though? I'd like to introduce you to Gizmo. Oh. Good. Sit, 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 sit. Good boy. He's not in the video. I know. Oh. What am I Exploring. Thinking? Thank you. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs>